Well, first thing I just want to say is, uh, is I got to thank Carla Williams, President Ryan, uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, to be standing before you today. Uh, having won uh, my first game as a, as a college head coach, I want to thank those players and the staff, um, all of the staff, uh, every, uh, every uh, person that touches this program for their belief in me and just the, uh, the hard work that they put in to have these guys ready to play uh, today. I want to thank the student section. You know, I really challenge them. Uh, thank them for, uh, for showing up. Uh, I'm gonna get after the rest of the folks because there were a lot of seats in the in the upper deck that weren't that weren't full. But hopefully they uh, they got a glimpse of of where we're taking this program and what we can be. But very very appreciative and grateful uh, for the opportunity to to be the head coach of the University of Virginia. And I just want to thank all those who who believe in me and gave me an opportunity to uh, to be here today. So with that, I'll I'll be quiet and let you guys start firing away. All right, coach. Again, congratulations on the win. A couple of things. You've been very uh, transparent about you took your time in picking the right job. You had a lot of opportunities. You experienced a lot of success. So as you come off the field and even the kids giving you the game ball in the locker room and some of the things that you've experienced, just personally, what does it mean for you not only to be victorious, but have come through this experience and this process on the other side of it right now? Just confirmation. Um, you know, I think that in this profession, you can you can be fast and take the wrong job. Uh, but I believe I was I was patient, and the Lord opened up the right door, and I'm in the right place. Uh, and just I, the the call the confirmation I needed was to see the joy of the locker room of those guys experience uh, experiencing victory, uh, and just just pure joy, emotion, uh, and appreciation for all the hard work uh, that they put in. And uh, and also, also pregame, I thought the atmosphere uh, was really really good. Um, we're going to continue to improve upon that. So all the uh, all the pieces are here uh, that I was looking for. Uh, to build something special. And for me, it was just building something special that everybody that's a part of it can be proud of. Not about, not about myself, but about everybody that's involved. Two quick things, Coach. Brennan Armstrong, you have a special relationship with him. It started getting him to come back. Today, he becomes the all-time leader in yards offensively for this university's program. Just your comments on that accomplishment and your relationship with him. And I'm sure you're pretty glad to have him back. Uh, you know, Brennan, the first and foremost is is the the type of person that you want to be around and be associated with him uh, with because he's so low maintenance, low key, uh, hard worker, blue collar. Doesn't care about uh, what some people say he should care about. He cares about his teammates. Uh, I guarantee you he's not worried about the stats. Uh, I had to tell him, hey, don't take that hit uh, in some of those situations. Like, buddy, it, you know, it's late in the game. You know, get out. But not, nah, coach. We we weren't playing. We weren't playing to the standard. So I had to, you know, I had to do it. So you just you just love everything about uh, what his DNA is. Uh, and I'm just happy that he's here uh, to for me to come alongside. And because because at the end of the day, uh, what the vision I have is only going to come to life with the uh, belief of those guys. And he's the, and he's the uh, paramount in uh, in our success going forward. Final question for the radio network coach. Lastly, defensively, you have an offensive background, the ebbs and flows of the game with Coach Rudd, your, your impressions of what you saw defensively today. You know, uh, I thought they responded well in the first half. Uh, they were giving up a little bit of a uh, little bit too much in the run game, but then they found a way to, to get some stops. And then in fairness to the defense, they got put in some tough situations in that second half. We had back to back sudden changes, you know, in, in unfavorable uh, field position. Uh, they got uh, they got it to a long field goal that they missed. They had a couple of fourth down stops, short yardage stops. Uh, so there's going to be a lot to clean up. Uh, but I think just the, the guys uh, having a chance to see themselves being successful in situations is uh, is uh, it's just going to help us going forward? And I missed I missed a timeout. I should have called a timeout. I heard the substitution on the headset. I thought we were in good shape uh, when we had the interception. So that's that's on me. But just proud of the guys uh, for having them ready to play, uh, being able to play a lot of people, um, and then being able to make adjustments in the game to to give us uh, some stops so that the offense could kind of flip the momentum for us. Uh, Jeff and Mike, what did what did you like most about your team's performance, and what did you like least? Right, I think the, the, the first half, uh, the, just the, the response to adversity. So offense goes out, you know, they, they, they don't have a successful drive, and then they come back and they score on four straight drives. You know, defense gets off to a good start, then they give up uh, a little bit, then they come back and they respond, uh, and they're able to get some stops. So those were the positives in the first half. The second half, I, 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 w I wasn't pleased with the second half. Uh, I challenged the guys in the locker room coming out uh, that we got to finish. 
You know, if we're gonna if we're gonna we're gonna find out uh, the maturity level and the makeup of this team in the second half, and and I felt like the guys just uh, were were uh, excited about the success and they were focusing on the first half and didn't finish the second half. So it's a great opportunity uh, to teach these guys uh, how to how to finish games uh, because games are going to be won in the fourth quarter. And uh, it was also credit to uh, to Richmond. And I told them I said those guys got a championship pedigree. You look at the number of conference championships. Their head coach has been a part of a national championship, and they fought like champions that they are in the second half and they didn't quit and we knew they weren't going to quit so great opportunity to teach the second half is uh, glad that we were able to finish it and find a way uh, but it's going to be a, a you know a tough day on Monday when we're, when we're transparent and say these are the things that we got to clean up. Uh, hey coach, Des mentioned in the preseason the idea that uh, six guys will probably be catching the ball regularly doesn't mean it's six wide receivers how do you feel about beyond the, the big four who got most of the targets how do you feel about your depth and we saw Paris at the backfield is that a weapon that right you, can... you know wanted to play more guys at, at all positions was hoping that the guys were going to come out uh, of the half we got the ball take uh, take care of business maybe if we would have scored a couple more times uh, be able to play some guys get them some in-game experience but unfortunately uh, you know the game was the game was tight there uh, towards the uh, towards the end until we finished it off so um, uh, I want the guys to catch the ball better all around. I think before we can uh, allow some of the younger guys, the the older guys gotta gotta set the standard, set the tempo for uh, for catching the ball. It was good to see Paris, you know, being transparent. He was kind of running the wrong route uh, and got rewarded for it uh, for the touchdown. But hey, you know, sometimes it's just your day. It's just your day. And uh, but but kudos to uh, to Brendan for finding him. But. Uh, we want to play. I want to play as many guys as I can. You know, guys like uh, like Starling and Chandler. They're guys that need to step up. Uh, Luke Wentz is a guy that needs to step up. And uh, you don't really know how they're going to respond until you put them in a game situation. Uh, and unfortunately, we just didn't didn't have that luxury today. But hopefully, going forward, the guys will see uh, take advantage of opportunities so that the younger guys get a chance to play. Uh, Brad, then David, then Greg. Tony, you. A lot of coaches will say you don't really know what you've got till you play somebody. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, coming out of this, how did this line, kind of line up with what you thought you had, and what do you think you have coming out of this? You know, offensively, uh, I knew uh, that we were supposed to have. Uh, I didn't know what it was going to look like because the the scheme is different than what uh, than what they're used to. But I thought they responded well. I thought they picked up on the protection, especially early in the game, for the most part. Uh, pleased with the overall. Uh, Production in the run game early on. I didn't. I didn't like how we uh, uh, didn't change the line of scrimmage uh, early on. But the guys settled in um, from that standpoint. So uh, pleased with, with with what we have offensively. Still opportunities to grow. And then defensively, um, I was hoping that the D line was going to be a little bit more disruptive. Uh, give credit to uh, to Richmond there, uh, but also a great opportunity to uh, to learn. So I think defensively, uh, if our guys you know will buy into just every down playing with with the energy, the excitement. You know, I had to get on them. There were a couple times that. We weren't celebrating uh, plays. Like I got on the offense when Paris had that run. It was like maybe a three-yard run, but he's dragging guys and he's fighting, and everybody's just watching. Man, that, that's that's the heart of a champion right there. That's when you win. And there were some times on defense where we were walking around. That's why I called a timeout and it's like, hey man, let's get over here and let's pick the energy up. So, so we're 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 a young football team uh, all around. Um, we got some veteran guys, but they're young in my perspective with me and the expectations. And uh, and we're going to go to work as a staff, you know, helping those guys uh, reach their potential. Tony, with a minute 22 before halftime, you guys stopped Richmond on downs. You're at yep. the 34. Mm -hmm. I think you had multiple timeouts. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. And I'm wondering why you were so passive there. Well, was trying to. I, I told Des, let's let's run the ball. If we hit a big play, then you know we took the shot play, and I think that was the one that ricocheted off the the back of the helmet uh, there. And then I was just uh, I was at a point. Let's just get it to the half because um, I was starting to see some things uh, from the team that that I needed to needed to correct. Um, so that's that's really what that was. Um, not not necessarily uh, anything other than. You know, kind of the, the ebb and flow of the game right there, and I just felt like we needed to run it. And then if we hit a big play, we were going to be aggressive. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to take a chance. You know, with with what you know we've been doing offensively, and put those guys uh, in a situation going into the half uh, not being successful. So that was on me. Tony, the, the consecutive short yardage stops by the defense. Josh Ahern was in the middle of of both of them, and he'd kind of come off the bench cold in the second half. How hard is that to do, and how much? Did you guys need those those stops? Oh, we needed we needed those stops just from a confidence standpoint uh, for the for the defense uh, because they they've been giving up a lot uh, in the run game, just too much on on first down. 
um, not playing in their backfield. And then to have uh, fourth and one and to, to make the stop, again, it's just an opportunity for us to show them what they're capable of and, and what they can be if, if they play every down like it's their, like it's their last down. And then Ahern, man, he's a, he's a football player. Uh, he's a he is a he is a football player and uh, and I knew he was going to stay engaged in the game. You know he was on the sideline the entire time and he was just chomping at the bit. And actually he subbed himself in there uh, on one of those uh, substitution deals. So we'll deal with that on a uh, on a, on Monday. Preston <laughs> and Ed. Yeah, Coach, some, you said sometimes it's just their day for Paris Jones today. Y'all have seen this a lot in camp, but what's it like actually seeing it in practice and see him go out there and turn out those yards? Yeah, you don't you don't know because he, he doesn't have he didn't have a ton of game experience prior to. And you try to make the, the practices harder than the game, but but again, when you get out there and, and things and bullets are flying, you just don't know. So really, really happy for him. Uh, he's an unbelievable young man. He's he's the epitome of what uh, commitment looks like. Uh, he works hard every single day. So it was, and I was glad I was next to him during the uh, during the good old song. So I got to rub on his head and tell him how proud I was of him uh, because uh, you know he 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 stayed the course. He's a fifth year guy. Um, probably wasn't looking very promising uh, when I came in. Uh, new guy. Probably going to change a lot of things. But uh, to see him have that success uh, is uh, is really really awesome. Tony, how much of the success for Brennan, both throwing early and then running after that, is because of the offensive line and the running game were able to open things up so early? As I've said, as I've said, we want to establish the run, and then everything you know opens up off of that. The play action, um, you get the safeties to fit on some of your play action stuff, and then you're able to hit some some seam balls down um, down the field. Uh, so it was it was just good to see the offensive line. That was the first time they played together. So you got a lot of guys that's the first time they're starting the game. Uh, so a lot of plays played together. And as I said, I thought the protection was good, especially in the first half. A couple of the times when Brennan got hit were, were run calls. Mike was too fast on a, on a, on a counter scheme. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we screwed up a couple things and got him hit. But overall, uh, I, liked the, I, I liked the ability to protect the quarterback. And now what we got to do is we got to continue to grind and grind and grind in the run game uh, to be able to be consistent running the game and moving people and creating holes for the backs. And then the backs, too. The backs got to reward the offensive line. There were a couple of times when the, the offensive line you know, did a solid job and then the back's not running his track. You know, he's diving a little bit too early. Uh, and it looks like it's on the offensive line, but it's really on the running back. We're going to take four more questions from uh, Mike, Hank, Greg, and Zach. Mm -hmm. Tony, this was your, your first time out as a head coach. I'm curious, operationally, you mentioned some of the timeout decisions, but uh, signaling in plays, substitutions, how, how do you feel like your organization worked operationally today? I thought it was I thought it was relatively clean in the first half, and then you know we started having some success, and and guys got distracted, and we we weren't clean uh, at all in the in the second half, and if you watch me, I was constantly taking notes throughout the course of the game uh, because, as I said, coming into the game, uh, I want to focus on the core value things. You know, how we get out of the huddle, how do we get off the field, do we finish through the end zone uh, when the ball's kicked out the back of the end zone on kickoff. So there was a lot of things that I was that I was. Uh, looking at that may not have been from a schematic standpoint, but I thought we were solid in the first half. The miscues were more just on the field stuff. You had a couple of penalties uh, on the offensive line, false start, uh, hands to the face, and then the other things were the turnovers uh, and the ball on the ground. But in the second half, we had substitution issues. Uh, the one that it shouldn't have happened, uh, we subbed, and then we tried to sub late. That, should, that shouldn't have happened. That was too late. And by that time, uh, you know, I, was, I, was, I stepped away. I heard them say sub. I checked to see if they needed something. And then I saw that we got the first sub, and the next thing I know, and I saw I should have called a timeout on that one. But that's something that I got to learn learn from. So second half, uh, not as clean, but a great opportunity for us to, as a staff, to get better. Because remember, it's not just about the players. I got to get better as a head coach. The staff has to get better uh, in order to uh, to help these players uh, get better. Mm -hmm. Tony, you've talked about the balance you want offensively, and you said you got on Brendan for that hard hit he took. Two thirds of his run yardage came on one play. Mm -hmm. How much do you expect him to be part of the balance in the running game? You know, for him, it's just make us right and and keep defenses honest and and really, 
it be, being transparent, that was kind of a busted play. Uh, they don't know that, but we had a little quarterback follow right there. Uh, probably should have gave it to the running back, but then he, he, he just got the savvy to know, okay, it wasn't clean. I'm just going to follow it, and then he takes off uh, for the run for the, uh, for the touchdown. But for him, I just want him to make us right. In any of our decision plays, our decide plays, where we need to pick up a hat with the, uh, with the quarterback, I want him to make uh, clean decisions and then get what he can get and then move on to the next play. And then uh, if he can get a little bit more, but understand, too, how to protect himself you know, in the run game. Because I want the running backs to lead the charge uh, with the balance, but I want him to be able to, to keep us right uh, with our legs, but then also manage uh, with his arm any of the perimeter outlet screens that we have that we consider part of our run game. Coach, uh, Paris Jones, obviously you talked about uh, how Time good to go. <laughs> how good <laughs> Coach Blinky's giving the two minute <laughs> How good he was on the ground uh, in, in the passing game. He had one block, I think, early in the first quarter uh, on a third down, picked up a, a blitzing right. linebacker. What does that tell you about him and, and you know how he could maybe develop into sort of a three down back? For yeah, you? if you want to be a three down back, you gotta be complete. You gotta you gotta be able to to uh, Find the big play when it's there. You got to run behind your pads and get the dirty yards. And then you got to step in the line of fire and take the bullet for the quarterback and find any way to keep the quarterback from getting hit. So it was encouraging there. Uh, there was also an opportunity, too, where he didn't didn't perform. So we'll challenge him there. But uh, he's got to use whatever he can uh, in the uh, in the passing game because he's not a big guy. But if he's got a willingness, we say put your face in the fan. He's a tough guy. He'll give you everything that he has. As long as he's willing to do that, then he can stay on the field. Because in third down, if he can protect, but then also you see him out of the backfield, he can be a weapon out of the backfield. So it, it gives us the advantage so that we're not you know predictable in those situations by bringing a different guy in. Uh, Nathan, you want to wrap this up? You say uh, sometimes it's just your day. You talked about Paris' touchdown. What was he supposed to do on that play, and how did he turn it into a success? Well, he was supposed to, he was supposed to just swing. He was supposed to run a swing route and not a wheel route. And they were bringing, they were bringing the six-man pressure. Uh, if you watch them, they were, they were double-A gap, six-man pressure on us. Uh, if he's free releasing, that means we got five. And uh, they didn't, they didn't uh, flare control and peel with the back. He wheeled it up. Brennan, if you bought some time, kind of lofted it up. I asked Brennan if his heart stopped when he saw him double catch that ball because he almost acted like he didn't want to catch it. But he was supposed to stay flat, which is critical because now your quarterback, a lot of times your running back is the last progression. Right, and so the quarterback's eyes are downfield, downfield, downfield. Boom, find the back. But Brennan's played enough football; he's got enough savvy. He understands six man, six man pressure on a five man protection. Uh, I got to find my back quick. Uh, coach, before we wrap up, Brad had an observation from your coach's show the other night. Uh oh. Are you gonna do the Ace Ventura thing? Okay, I just have a question on the whole football movie thing. Right? Okay. <laughs> so we get remember the Titans, right? Mm -hmm. And you get um, Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights. Night, right. But then you you got you got uh, necessary roughness. Right, you've got all these other ones out there, and you take Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just calling into question what, what's going on. There. Hey. <laughs> Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, man, that's that's a classic. That's a that's a, that's a classic. That's a classic. It wasn't intended. It wasn't intended. Replacements, Longest Yard, all that stuff. But but Ray Finkel, man, Ray Ray Finkel, Ray Finkel. Uh, but no, actually, that was like that came to my mind. I was like, Ace, Ace Ventura. I, I don't watch a ton of football movies. I actually don't watch much TV at all. Uh, but uh. But Ace Ventura now, Jim Carrey, he's 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 a he's a guy. I like him I'm a lot. Assume you said replacements, which is gonna move on. With. Replacements. Which one is that? That's the one with Keanu Reeves and the. Keanu. And the, and the oh. Reeves. Come on, man. Yeah, like hey. We gotta get you. We gotta. Get we got, you. Hey, I gotta find some time. So if hey, if I'm watching movies, then obviously yeah, I, some some something's wrong with this uh, right, with this football everybody. program. Appreciate y'all. Thank you.